Hey guys, I hope you're doing okay. So this is a revision video for AS Computer Science. It's got some of the areas concerned with the recent mod that we've done in lessons. So I'm going to whiz through these questions. Uh, hopefully you can either download the sound or listen back to it before uh, you do a future test. Uh, but hopefully this will help you. So let's move on. So the first question that we had was Elegant Bags. It's a company selling handbags. And it wants to make a website, but it wants to know what its servers are doing in terms of using a public IP address. And in lessons, you may remember that we talked about how the IP address is the unique identifier. Now, what it wants to know about in this question is it wants to know the process of how it gets from that IP address to the domain name. So the answer to this question and the way that you can get this marks is you need to acknowledge that the customer enters the domain name. So it could be google.com. Google uh, then once that's happened, the DNS server needs to go to that IP address. So is it like there's a database and it goes to that IP address. And if the DNS server can't find it, it goes to another DNS server to try and find that information. Then the DNS server sends the IP address to the browser so that it can retrieve it and load up your web page. So that's what's happening here. And that's what it wants from you on that question. It wants you to be able to explain step by step what is happening. Question two is a little bit simpler and it's about ethics. Now, a lot of students in this question started talking about how it had to make sure that it didn't offend people, it wasn't racist, but it's actually talking about accessibility. What's an ethical issue? Well, ensuring that everybody has access to the website. If not everybody can get on it, then it's not going to be good. You also need to make sure that customers' data is stored securely. And you could even extend this question into some six mark questions where it's talking about the Data Protection Act. So just be aware of that. Question three was that a programmer spends her spare time using open source and you had to describe what was meant by open source. Now, when it came to the question, a lot of people were saying that the source code was free of charge. But what you really want to talk about is how it's freely available. It's easy to get access to and others are able to amend the code. A lot of you talked in, in different areas and you did acknowledge that the source code is there but you didn't say that it was freely available so you need to get into the habit of using the kind of exam talk that's being used question four the company is working on scenes from the latest movie and they are talking about security and they wanted you to comment on the free acts that were available now where i dropped a lot of you on marks for this was the context you weren't relating it to the company but there were also areas that you failed to comment on when it came to the Computer Misuse Act, the Designs and Patents Act, and Data Protection. So we're going to move on to that. So anyone who produces something, whether it's a video, a song, a movie, anything like that, they own that copyright. They own that material. You need to acknowledge that Scruffles, it, they own that material. And you also need to acknowledge because you own that like your coursework you own that so others need to have need to get permission in order to redistribute that and you need to acknowledge that and talk about how it relates to the company on top of that you also need to talk about if anybody gains access to that movie and puts it elsewhere they breach the computer misuse act you also need to make sure that it's more severe if you can prove intent and that's what we talked about in lesson don't forget to talk about employees data because if the employees data is on that computer or any personal data to do with film stars so you can relate it in that context they have a right to they have to protect that data so you need to acknowledge the data protection act hi guys so this question here a lot of you uh got tripped up on some of the wording of this question here so you need to be careful remember that each of these questions were in two's complement so I'm just going to acknowledge that two's complement because when it came to this question a lot of people left the digit on the end which would have made it a negative number and remember that unsigned is 
the, it's basically your your normal binary. It's not got any uh, any bit on the end that acknowledges that it's positive or negative. Now the answer to these questions are as shown here. Now what a lot of people did in this exam question to shorten it as much as possible is they didn't include this zero and they lost the mark simply because if you leave that zero off the end that now becomes a negative number and that becomes a negative number so please be careful when you are answering this question now remember programmers use floating point numbers so that they can either represent really large numbers or small values so just make sure you acknowledge that and um, we use the variable so that we can actually store the data so that's uh, pretty straightforward there now our next question was why do why what is the difference between ram and rom now you should know by now that ram is it, it's it's volatile so basically when you turn the computer off you lose anything stored in ram and you should know that rom read only means it can't be changed we don't lose any of the data and it's non volatile so what you can see on this slide is that ram is volatile and rom is non-volatile uh, ram is editable in other words anything going in or out of the ram can change whereas rom can't be altered uh, ram is larger and rom is obviously smaller usually it's a, it's about two megabytes whereas ram you can get anything up to like eight gigs so just bear that in mind one reason why an item would be stored in ram and give a reason why we use it well user and software and the operating system you must make sure you acknowledge it's currently in use if you don't acknowledge that you don't get the mark for it so we use ram to store software applications the operating system currently in use okay the user must alter the contents you must be able to alter the contents of files so that's why we use it ram offers direct access so in other words from the cpu we can access that ram uh, using different buses and it's much faster than using something such as a hard drive uh, secondary storage because if we had to go to secondary storage it's further away from the cpu it's going to slow us down a bit so remember that oh one item that is stored in the rom you should know that this is the bios or the boot up uh, so it's the boot file so we must it must be available when the computer is turned on if you look at older machines you get to see this a lot more and it loads up all of that that kind of boot jargon and you can see it and it might say hp in the corner that is your boot file and it's getting you prepped and getting you ready to load up that operating system but it's got to be available whenever you switch that computer on otherwise you can't get to the operating system and this is why it can't be editable because if somebody's able to edit that or change that it's going to break your machine uh, so just be aware of this and we're moving on question nine uh, when users play a movie it remains stored on the cache on the computers uh, this means that somebody watching the same film in the future can stream it and others can watch it now it wants to know what model what network model didn't say topology it says network model okay and the two models that we really talked about are the client server model and the peer-to-peer so for this because it's file streaming you need to use peer-to-peer -peer. it would have also accepted a hybrid uh, using uh, a, a hybrid of the client server model but the point is that there doesn't need to be one server for it to rely on it's getting the files from multiple users so this is basically file sharing which is how you know that the answer to this question is peer-to-peer -peer. Uh, it means that you haven't got to uh, invest in lots of other hardware or bandwidth you can actually share it across other people so pay attention to these bullet points this is the this is the these are where you get the marks from and how you answer the question question 10 a desktop computer uses a single user multitasking operating system so remember multitasking is where you can do multiple things such as using word powerpoint excel at the same time now what the first way to get these marks is so points you need to consider when answering this question is that only one user can use the computer at a time the other thing that you need to acknowledge is that they may have multiple users so if I can't go on it at the moment, another I could go on it at a later time, uh, and that there's a user file on that computer for me. Uh, 
acknowledge that multiple tasks can be carried out at once, such as word processors, PowerPoints, uh, sorry, presentation software. Uh, you also need to say that each each activity has a allocated processing time, which is why you can run multiple tasks. Now, where a lot of you drop down when talking about operating systems is you didn't actually acknowledge that you can control hardware. You didn't acknowledge the purpose of an operating system, and this really dropped your mark. So you've got to remember that operating systems, you can do file handling. It, has, it gives you the user interface. It allows you to actually have security over user files. It allows you to actually translate code and communicate over networks. All of these things would have boosted your mark, and then it would have just been a case of watching out for your spelling and grammar. So please be aware of that. It's a nine marker question, so you've got to be careful. Question 11 was really talking about what a real-time operating system is, and it was relating it to the context of a hospital. And again, it was the context that dropped a lot of you in terms of marks. So you had to explain why we use ROM, why we use RAM. The answers to these questions, remember, real-time systems need to respond within a quick amount of time, a guaranteed time frame. Think about it. If you are in a nuclear plant and, the, and your operating system doesn't adjust because of any heating, you can have a nuclear meltdown. It needs to be that quick. You also need to acknowledge about what can happen to patients and how there can be, if there are delays using other operating systems that aren't real time, what impact is it going to have on that patient if they get ill? Could they possibly die? You've really got to go into detail and relate it to the context. Again, talking about ROM having a quick startup because it can't change, this is going to be good to use in a quick emergency because it can't be altered and it can't be accidentally or maliciously changed. So you need to be able to comment on why would you use RAM and why would you use ROM in these situations? This is the first set of some helpful exam revision. Uh, I appreciate that this video is long, but if it's been helpful to you, please subscribe below. Uh, these are ways in which you should be answering the questions and the, the words that are in the exam mark scheme. So look out for them, pause the video, maybe answer the question and then check your answer. I hope it's been useful. If it has, please subscribe below. Thank you for watching.